our motivation to study the line segment intersection problem was the problem of map overlay. So let's get back to that now. And in particular, we're going to see a data structure to store planar subdivisions because that's essentially the map layers that we're dealing with. So to solve the map overlay problem, what we looked at so far was okay, if I want to combine two layers and they consist of regions bounded by line segments, then I have to be able to find those the intersections between those line segments. That problem we've solved. So now the key problem that we still need to look at is how do we actually represent subdivisions? So how do we represent these map layers? And we're going to see a data structure for that. The data structure is called doubly connected edge list, and we're going to see why it's called uh, that later, um, or short D cell. So what is a planar subdivision? So a planar subdivision is a subdivision of the plane induced by a set of non-intersecting line segments, or they only intersect at common endpoints. So here we have a planar subdivision. It has as objects vertices, edges, and faces. So the vertices are the endpoints of these line segments. So here we have two vertices. The edges, edges we see the interior of those line segments, and then the faces are regions bounded by, so two-dimensional connected regions um, that don't contain any of the line segments. And we also have the, I said bounded, but so this outside here, that we also count as a face, that's our outer face. Let's start with some terminology. If a vertex is part of an edge, we say that vertex is incident to that edge. Likewise, this edge is incident to that face. So that's always when the objects have different dimensionalities and we have this inclusion property. So the vertex is part of an edge or a vertex is part of a face. If we have neighboring objects of the same dimension, then we talk about adjacent. So for instance, we have that this face is adjacent to the outer face. Let's have a closer look at the faces. So every planar subdivision has one outer face. So one face does, that does not have an outer boundary. So every other face actually has an outer boundary. So any, let me pick a face here. So this face here, it has as an outer boundary these segments with their vertices. So every face except for the outer face has an outer boundary. Every face has zero or more inner boundary. So for instance, this face here, I mean, it has an outer boundary, but it in particular also has two so-called holes. So the general idea of, in terms of data structure, what we, we want to have is we want to have the vertices as objects, edges as objects, faces as objects, and somehow pointers in between. And the key question is, what kind of pointers do we want to have? So do we want to have um, pointers from, I mean, if I have a face and the, 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 the vertices incident to that face, I mean, do I want to have from that face a pointer to each of these vertices? What happens if that face then changes? Do I have to update all of those vertices? So these kind of questions we need to address. And what is a, what seems like a good idea is to make the edges the central objects of such a data structure. And why is that the case? Because edges actually in terms of their incidences are nicely behaved. So every edge has exactly two uh, vertices that are incident to that edge and it's incident to exactly two faces. So for this edge, those are the V1 and V2 are the vertices, F1 and F2 are the corresponding faces. So far, so good. What we would like to have is we would like to have a way to distinguish these two vertices, not just have two vertices, but have some kind of, from the perspective of that edge, having, having these, having a way of distinguishing them. And the way to do that is kind of to give an orientation to that edge. So if that edge points upwards, then this vertex is the origin of that edge, and this is the destination. This also allows us to distinguish the faces. So that one face 
that is to the right and one face that is to the left. So if we can give an orientation to an edge, that's a good thing. Now, from the perspective on a, of a face, it would be nice if these orientations are consistent. I mean, imagine I'm, I'm this face here. I, for some reason, know that this edge belongs to me. Then it would be nice to simply be able to follow edges around the face. So we would like to, for this face, be able to go to the next edge on that face or to the previous edge on that face and likewise to the next edge here and the previous one here. And we would like to do so in a consistent way, but that is problematic. I mean, if let's say I'm, I'm starting here, so I give this edge that orientation. And now I want to be able to go walk around the faces. So I walk around this triangle this edge has to be like this and this one like that. So far, so good. This one has to, if I want to go around this triangle, uh, it has to be like this. But now with this triangle here, I'm screwed. So here, this triangle, I, I have those go here. So there's no way to orient this. So that doesn't work. And here comes a trick and here comes a kind of specialty of this data structure. I mean, it's called doubly connected edge list. And what we do here actually is we don't have edges, but we have half edges. So imagine you have an edge and split it in half, but along its actual direction, like you see here. This allows us to get consistent orientations. Yeah, so now I can walk around this face using this half edge and I can walk around this face using the other half edge. So that's very nice. So let's put this into a data structure. For every half edge, so for every, yeah, this half edge here, I will, it will have a twin. So the twin will be the half edge in the other direction. And a half edge will now be incident to only one face. So then it is also easy to say what is the next half edge and the previous half edge because that's the next half edge in relation to that face and the previous one to that face. And likewise for the twin, it also has a previous and a next half edge. So that works out nicely. So what we have now so far is we have our vertex objects. The vertex objects are pretty simple. I mean, they will have some kind of coordinate and every with every vertex, we will store one incident edge. So we're not going to store all incident edges because that would be, yeah, because that simply is not necessary and would be more than we need. And then for the half edges, what we're going to store is for the half edge, we want to know its origin, its twin, the other half, its twin half edge, the incident face, and the next and the previous half edge. So you already see, so, I mean, you, you would have a, maybe expected that next to the origin, we store the destination. So why don't we do that? Because we can find it out easily by asking the twin, which we know, for its origin. That gives us our destination. So this might come a bit as a surprise, this data structure, but it is powerful enough to do the local operations that we want to do. For instance, think about this for a moment. If I have, I give you a vertex, and now you want to report all incident edges. How do you do that? Okay, so let's think about that together. I have a vertex. I would like to have all incident edges. I only have one, but I can take that one. So here's an incident edge. That's my incident edge. So what can I do from here? I can ask this incident edge for its twin. That twin will bring me back to that vertex, but more importantly, I can follow that twin. I can ask the twin for the next half edge along the face, and that will be my next incident edge. I can ask that, that edge, half edge for its twin, and so on, until I'm back at my original half edge, then I'm done. So that's just one example of that this is enough in terms of what we need to store. 
for the vertices and the half edges. The faces we still need to talk about. So for a face, what do we need? I mean, for a face, we need access to its outer boundary and possibly to its inner boundaries. And what we do is we were going to store one half edge for the outer boundary and for every inner boundary also one half edge. So we see here we have this face that has one pointer to one of the half edges because from there I can find all others by going through the next or previous if you want to. And then I have pointers to the inner boundaries and again just to one half edge. So that's all we need. Um, here just as a summary again vertices store one incident edge, faces store one half edge of the outer boundary, one half edge for each inner boundary and the half edges then half origin twin incident face next and previous. Let's use the following quiz to think about these notions a bit. Which of the following statements is not always true? The next of the previous of an edge is the edge again. The incident phase of an edge is the incident phase of the next edge. Or the twin of the previous of the twin of an edge is the next edge. So the answer is the last one. The twin of the previous of the twin of an edge is not always the next edge. The other two are true. So I take this edge, the previous of that edge along that phase it might be it would be this one. And if I go from the previous to the next, I'm again at the edge. Fine. Next and previous were kind of def were defined to be the next and previous on the uh, of the incident uh, phase. So so that is also certainly true. Now I have an edge. Let's see when the last one is not true. I have an edge. I take its twin. Of that twin, I take the previous. And of that previous, the twin. That kind of looks like the next edge. But of course, if there's more going on here, it is not necessarily the case. And that's a doubly connected edge list. The reason we were talking about it was map overlay. So let's we briefly go back to the map overlay problem, but I don't want to go into it in detail because you now have the two ingredients that you need. And from that, you can design your own sweep line algorithm for the map overlay problem. The starting point is we have two subdivisions. We want to compute the overlay. The edges of the overlay will be parts of the edges of the original subdivisions cut at intersection points. And the vertices will also be, the vertices will be the original vertices plus intersection points. What we need is we need to find those intersection points and on the way also make sure that we kind of split the faces correctly and then we are done. Details of this you can find also in the corresponding chapter of the book. To wrap things up for today, the application that we were looking at was map overlay. The geometric problem uh, which we used to solve it uh, was a line segment intersection problem. The algorithmic technique used for this was plane sweep and we looked at that in a lot of detail and to store subdivisions we use doubly connected edge lists. See you next time.